what's up everybody welcome back to exotica slowly again and finally today we have reached the last verses of the first chapter of the bhagavad gita and today we shall finish the first chapter and then in the next video we shall discuss about the summary of the first chapter about what are the things which arjuna is telling to lord krishna and we will also see his different arguments of why he should not fight and we will summarize the first chapter in the next video and in this video we will study the gita from the 42nd verse till the 46th verse the very short verses the purports are very small so we'll finish it in one go all right therefore as we always say once again god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you understand the gita scrutinizingly there you go we studied till the 41 verses of the first chapter and in that we saw that arjuna is giving different arguments why he should not fight he is telling that it will be great greatly sinful if we kill these ancestors and all these people who have assembled in this battlefield of kurukshetra and he is telling that oh, although these people are great but their family ultimately you see family should not be killed and then he's telling there will be a religion if the de destruction of the dynasty is prevailing and the family tradition will be destroyed and when there is a religion the women of the family will become degraded and then there will be unwanted progeny by that we discussed about unwanted progeny about what are the qualities which a woman should look in a husband before getting married <laughs> or what is the most important quality that is to be seen that is if the husband or the person who the girl is planning to choose as a life partner is having inquisitiveness about spirituality or he is practicing some spiritual path not he has interest or not everybody may have interest especially in country like india uh, i have experience when i say this to uh, girls they will say oh yeah, yeah my boyfriend is very religious <laughs> it doesn't work that way he has to be deeply rooted to some spiritual organization and some spiritual practice only then you should go ahead that is what arjuna is telling here it's not me who is telling this okay and then he also says when there is an increase of unwanted progeny uh, then the rituals to the ancestors are not performed and thereby there is destruction in the entire society and in the social order now we shall study the 42nd verse and let's begin with the recitation to the preceptors who gave us the divine knowledge ओम ज्ञान तिमीरंधस्य ज्ञानांजनाशलाकया चक्षुरुन्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम लेट्स बिगिन द फोर्टी सेकेंड वर्स दोषैर्त कुल ज्ञान वर्णसंकया उदस्य जति धर्म कुलधर्म चर्वत by the evil deeds of those who destroy the family tradition and thus give rise to unwanted children all kinds of community projects and family welfare activities are devastated purport community projects for the four orders of human society combined with family welfare activities as they are set forth by the institution of sanatan dharma or varnashram dharma are designed to enable the human being to attain the ultimate salvation so as i had said repeatedly earlier in the verses that varnashram dharma has two components varana and ashram ashram is for your spiritual well being and varana is for your mental well being your material well being basically your physical psychophysical then your mental emotional your overall nature basically that is the varana and we have the ashrama for our spiritual well being if you have not watched that video then please <laughs> go back there and watch in this playlist otherwise you may be clueless about what varnashrama is so we have the brahmin vaishyas kshatriyas 
and the Shudras, the Brahmans are the priests who give spiritual knowledge. Then we have the Chatriyas who are the ruling class, the royal authorities, the kings. And then the Vaishyas are the merchants, the traders, the money lenders, the money people, <laughs> capitalists. And then we have the Shudras who are the ones who are helping the other three classes, the peasants and laborers basically. And then we have the Ashrama where we have Brahmachari Ashram where till the age of 25 a person remains celibate and he becomes a Brahmachari. Brahmachari means Brahma Achar, one who focuses on Brahman that is spirit which is God. Achar means to practice, one who lives his life as a practitioner of spirituality that is one who is a Brahmachari. And then we have Grihastha from the age of 25 to 50 where a person marries and leads a God conscious life. And then we have Vanaprastha where the husband and wife give up their mundane association and physically stay together but they go on preaching spiritual knowledge and they retire from their family life. And then we have Sanyas where people leave their uh, wife in the home in the custody of their children and then the man goes alone to preach spiritual wisdom to others and in sannyas also there are different orders kutichak bahudak parivaraja kacharya and paramahamsa about which we will discuss later so now arjuna is telling by the evil deeds of those who destroy the family tradition and thus give rise to unwanted children all kinds of community projects and family welfare activities are devastated so he's telling if there is unwanted population basically in the society which means they are indulging in all sinful nonsensical activities like most of the people in Kali Yuga of today are then you will see there is lot of dissension that is why people are very much confused about what to do in life most of the people I know they are headless unfortunately that's very unfortunate that is the predicament of Kali Yuga that people they have gone away from their roots which is uh, spirituality and they have indulged in all the mundane affairs and now they are getting confused that is why there is this famous phenomena these days it's called midlife crisis at the age of 35 the person feels oh my god what did i do <laughs> i should have done something else maybe so then the person uh, feels i went wrong and at the age of 35 the people uh, start going and doing things which they wanted to do most of the people in my uh, friend circle or in my knowledge don't even know what they want to do if, if they don't know at all then how will they do yes so there's lack of clarity and that's what is said here that community projects for the four orders of the human society combined with family welfare activities are designed to enable the human being to attain his ultimate salvation so varnashrama system is ultimately meant for our well-being mentally spiritually and physically and psychophysically so then what happens is when you are happy overall becoming spiritually uh, inquisitive and having a spiritual elevation in life becomes very easy because you cannot say that i will keep practicing spirituality uh, by doing things which i don't like on a material level for example if you are in a job which you hate from nine to five you go and tell uh, this, these people that, oh, my dear sir, can you please chant this mantra? They'll be like, oh, no, 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 I can't chant. Because they are distressed, you see. So all these things happen. Therefore, the breaking of the Sanatan Dharma tradition by the irresponsible leaders of the society brings about chaos in that society and consequent people forget the aim of life, Vishnu. Such leaders are called blind and persons who follow such leaders are sure to be led into chaos. So here it said that in, indirectly Arjuna is saying, I do not want to be that person who breaks this Vanasrama system, who breaks the social order and then thereby I become that person who leads everybody to the blind well. So Arjuna is telling, I don't want to be the cause of the destruction of the entire society because then there will be complete chaos. People will be running here, there. People will not be knowing because there's no structure of education from the childhood. There's no culture where people are cultivated to become better human beings. So these are genuine concerns which Arjuna has. So it's given here that 
breaking the tradition by irresponsible leaders of the society brings about chaos in the society and consequent people forget the aim of life vishnu that means the aim of life is to uh, go towards lord vishnu that is what is the meaning of the word vivaha vivaha means avahan to go to vishnu <laughs> vivaha means you have s- now you you are now alone now you are sitting in a car with another person with your spouse and now you say okay earlier i was alone now we are going together towards god the destination has to be god that is why it is we vaha vahan towards lord vishnu otherwise it is not vivaha <laughs> it's simply a contract which you have signed right and that's what happens these days marriages fall apart things are breaking people are not happy people are miserable So Arjuna is saying, I do not want to be the root cause of such a big chaos because there will be dissension. People will not be happy, and then the order will collapse. So now the forty-third verse: Utsana kula dharma nama manusya nam janardana. Again, he is using the word janardana. Narake niyatam vaso bhavaiti anususrama. O Krishna, maintainer of the people, Janardana is the word. I have heard by disciplic succession that those whose family traditions are destroyed always dwell in hell. <laughs> so Arjuna is telling. I have read somewhere. I have heard somewhere from somebody. <laughs> Maybe his elder brother Yudhishthir might have said him. Well, Arjuna doesn't mention that. He says, "I have heard by disciplic succession. That means in parampara from the divine sages he has heard." one after the other that's disciplic succession that those whose family traditions are destroyed dwell they dwell in hell hell always <laughs> that means if you destroy the family tradition you will go to hell that's what arjuna is telling here he feels like that let's see what's there in the purport arjuna bases his argument not on his personal experience but on what he has heard from the authorities there you see that's the beauty arjuna is not telling according to me i think like this i think like that he's not telling that he's directly quoting reference that i have heard from the disciplic succession all right that's the beauty he's like a lawyer he's quoting from here from there not from my own whims my own thinking my own likes and dislikes which is very uh which always keeps changing today i may think oh i love this person tomorrow suddenly i hate that person and after some time i feel love feel in love fall in love with another person and after some time oh my god that person also disappears <laughs> so our own judgments our own thoughts beliefs our own conceptions are not very strong and even if they are strong it's not necessary they are true they may be false also but whatever is hard in parampara from the rishis from the divine sages that cannot be false and that's what arjuna is telling he bases his argument not on his own personal experience but on what he has heard from the authorities that is the way of receiving real knowledge one cannot reach the point the one cannot reach the real point of factual knowledge without being helped by the right person who is already established in that knowledge that means if you want spiritual knowledge you only have to get it from a bona fide guru or bona fide spiritual master who is already established in that knowledge all right that is the there is a, there is a system in the varnashram institution by which before death one has to undergo the process of atonement for his sinful activities and there are different kinds of uh, systems in uh, for remedies and for prayaschita which is called yes atonement so all these if people undergo then they can attain salvation which is mukti at the end provided they have developed love of god that's the predicament that is the prerequisite that you cannot just nullify sins and just say that okay i will be delivered now no you have to develop attraction for god that's the most important thing one who is always engaged in sinful activities must utilize the process of atonement called prayaschita without doing so one surely will be transferred to hellish planets to undergo miserable lives as the result of sinful activities so if you do not atone for your sins it is said here that you will be surely transferred to hellish planets to undergo miserable lives as a result of the sinful activities now somebody 
who is reading this or hearing this video they'll say oh my god this is fear mongering which is going on right no this is not fear mongering it's very simple it's a matter of common sense if you do wrong if you go if i go and rape a woman will the police not punish me maybe in some countries they may hang me also right why because i have violated the chastity of that woman i have violated their uh, the uh, her free will if i go and kill somebody i'll also be hanged because i have violated the freedom of that person his free will to live and enjoy so similarly when you commit sinful activities then we have to suffer even in this life and even in the next that is why you see people who are indulging in drinking illicit sex or gambling and eating meat their lives are always miserable they are always running behind astrologers oh please tell me they are going and taking shelter in heroin cocaine pornography this that facebook instagram my god relationships people it's rampant all, all over so they don't have to go to hell they are experiencing hell in this very life <laughs> the 44th verse is as follows aho bata mahata papam kartum vyavasita vayam यद राज्य सुख लोभे न हंतु स्वराज उदाता द ट्रांसलेशन अलास इन हिंदी दिस है हाय हाय अलास हाउ स्ट्रेंज इट इज दैट वी आर प्रिपेयरिंग टू कमिट ग्रेटली सिंफुल एक्ट्स ड्रिवेन बाय द डिजायर टू एन्जॉय रॉयल हैप्पीनेस वी आर इंटेंट ऑन किलिंग आवर ओन किंग्स मैन सो अर्जुना इज टेलिंग we are going to commit such big sins killing all these elders by that the family tradition will be destroyed and then there will be irreligion people will stop following the laws of god because there will be no order nobody will be there to teach them things and then we are preparing such great sins for what just for royal happiness to get a kingdom that's what arjuna is telling driven by selfish motives this is the purport one may be inclined to such sinful acts as the killing of one's own brother father or mother my god it's not unusual in this kaliyuga we see or oh, somebody loved a girl and then his brother fell in love with that girl so he went and murdered that brother they can murder their murder their own father and mother also if they do not sign in the property papers before dying right <laughs> there are many instances in the history of the world there are many such instances in the history of the world yes we all know so many instances where a brother kills a brother or a person kills his or her mother father but arjuna being a saintly devotee of the lord is always conscious of moral principles and therefore takes care to avoid such activities so arjuna is a greatly elevated spiritual personality so he is very much concerned of these moral principles of killing the family people and then not indulging in sin and therefore he wants to avoid such activities so arjuna is thinking basically just to sit in the throne why should we kill these people man <laughs> what a great personality he is the 45th verse yadi ma apatraikam asastram sastra panaya dhritarashtra rane hanyus tanme kshema taram bhavet the translation is better for me if the sons of dhritarashtra weapons in hand were to kill me unarmed and unresisting in the battlefield so he is telling better than me killing all these people would have been if the sons of dhritarashtra yes who are the sons duryodhana dushasana vikarna and so many hundred sons he had better than me killing them is if these people with their weapons in hand where to kill me unarmed and unresisting on the battlefield so it's best if i only go and surrender put my weapons down and these people come and kill me if by my death the entire family will be saved so be it <laughs> purport it is the common uh, it is the custom according to the chatriya fighting principles that an unarmed and unwilling foe should not be attacked so as per the chatriya courts a person who is not having defense should not be killed and who is not wanting to fight is also supposed to be given protection so uh, unarmed and unwilling foes should not be attacked that's what is said here arjuna however decided that even if attacked by the enemy in such a awkward position <laughs> he 
he would not fight so he's telling even if i am not having arms and the enemy comes and attacks me i am not going to attack them back he did not consider how much the other party was bent upon fighting all these symptoms are due to soft heartedness which resulting which results from his being a great devotee of the lord so he was a greatly elevated spiritual personality that is why he he was very soft hearted he did not want to kill all these people and he did not consider how much the other party was bent upon fighting that means he thought what will i do by fighting but he didn't realize they are bent on hell bent on killing them the other party once arjuna and yudhishthir maharaj dead that he didn't know i mean he always knew it but he is not uh, acknowledging that fact he is feeling as if oh no, they are good people no only i am bad maybe no that's not the case if you don't fight then they will come and kill you that's what is been told in the purport and the last verse is sanjay uvacha now sanjay is telling to dhritarashtra who is sanjay sanjay is the charioteer of dhritarashtra who is uh, situated in uh, hastinapur and he is reporting all the instances to the thruster when he is seeing in that lcd tv <laughs> which vyasdev the great sage the compiler of the vedic literatures uh, had bestowed to him it's not a tv actually he just had a vision to see whatever was going on in the kurukshetra and he could report to the thruster so sanjay uvacha means sanjaya speaks evam ukratva arjuna sankhe ratho pastha उपस विवाद वृषिज्य सरम चाप श्लोक समग्न मनसा संजय सेड ट्रांसलेशन अर्जुन दस हैव स्पोकन ऑन द बैटल फील्ड कास्ट असाइड हिज बो एंड एरोज एंड सेट डाउन ऑन द चैरियट हिज माइंड ओवरवेलम्ड विद ग्रीव सो अर्जुन हैज लॉस्ट इट कंप्लीटली ही सेट दैट्स इट आई एम नॉट फाइटिंग So the purport is while observing the situation of his enemy Arjuna stood up on the chariot but he was so afflicted with lamentation that he sat down again setting aside his bow and arrows such a kind and soft hearted person in the devotional service of the lord is fit to receive self knowledge should i repeat the last statement such a kind and soft hearted person in the devotional service of the lord is fit to receive self knowledge so why was arjuna chosen because uh, to be uh, bestowed the knowledge of the gita because he was so elevated and he was also very soft hearted there you see thus ends the bhakti vedanta purports to the first chapter of the shrimad bhagavad gita in the matter of observing the armies on the battlefield of kurukshetra There you go. Finally, we complete the first chapter, and tomorrow we will summarize the contents. And today we just saw Arjuna is again hell bent on not fighting. He is telling uh, that welfare activities will be devastated. People will be confused if there are killings, and then if I kill them, I will go to hell. And he is telling just for the sake of royal happiness, should we kill them? And he is telling at the end better than this if. they only come and kill me and sanjay is now telling to the thruster that arjuna has now put his bow and arrow down and his mind is overwhelmed with grief and confusion and then in the second chapter we shall start tomorrow all right if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed to it then please subscribe to it <laughs> and if you like this video click the thumbs up and if you are interested in having a personal consultation with me then the link to my website vedic renaissance is there below you can go and book a consultation with me all right the second chapter of the bhagavad gita due in the next videos until next time wish you good luck bye bye see you